All right, we're back. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to Livestock Winter Prep podcast number two with myself, Ginger, at Not For Nothing Homestead and my co-pilot, oops, wrong way, Dale (laughs) at Nine Acre Family Farms. (laughs) Well, hello there. How are you doing this evening, Dale? I'm doing great. How about you, Ginger? I'm good. I'm good. It's the temperature is, uh, it got really nice and warm today, as we were both saying earlier backstage before we started recording. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but now here it's dropping down. It's not and dropping he, down for you. And here it's not. It's warmish. Oh, like I'm so sorry. <laughs> the house is like getting up into the, close to 80 degrees so no way yeah wow that is nuts well so i guess this week we're gonna go over because we both had a cold snap we um, did i think it hit you first didn't it it hit you and then it came it over did hit me first and then it hit you um and so, so remind everybody where you're from where you're at I'm in Southeast Kansas, of course, and you're in? I'm in North Georgia. You bet. Yeah. So, geographically, we're kind of on the same plane. Almost. You're mm-hmm. a little bit south of me. Yeah. But, um, you know, what is it? Longitudinal or whatever. <laughs> we're we're kind of the same. Um, yes. We're, like, well, parallel from each other. Parallel. We're on a... <laughs> Parallel, but we're on the parallel. <laughs> we so yeah, we got down into uh, the one morning it was like 17 degrees here. That was pretty cold. Yeah, and that's pretty normal cold. for you, right? I mean, you're you're uh, you're accustomed to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not out of the ordinary for us to get, you know, sub 20, um, anywhere yeah. from zero to 20 come winter weather. And that gets a little bit nervous, of course, when you start having livestock on the homestead. Yes. Ah, oh, gosh, does it ever. I mean, it is a sleepless night. It is. I, I, I'm not kidding. Because you're, again, like we said last time, that animal is dependent solely on you for yes. everything. So you really do everything that you can uh, to it provide It is like having a toddler... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All the time. Yes. The only difference is, is a toddler that could run over you, could, <laughs> you know, put away a hundred pounds of corn overnight and, yes. you know, yes. could go disrupt the neighbor to the point of them, you know, taking legal action not, against you. <laughs> not being a nice neighbor anymore. Yeah. Exactly. You don't, you don't want to do that because they're trying to, uh, find something somewhere warm uh, to be somewhere warmer than where they are. If you have not pro- provided them adequate shelter yeah. um, in this instance for the cold. Um, so, yeah. So Dell and I both have pigs. Um, Dell has seven and I yep. have three. And then okay. Dell and I both have chickens. And how many chickens do you have now? Um, we've trimmed down our, our flock quite a bit. So we're down to the, mm, I'm going to say just over 20 right now, 20 or 25. Okay, we've got you. some, <laughs> we've got some, um, uh, some rogue chickens that are feral. We um, had, we had, uh, free range chickens that hatched out in our pastures. Oh, okay. So like sometimes you throw out scratch. Yeah. And it's just like, where are these chickens coming from? Like they just come yeah. out of nowhere. <laughs> and you're like, I've never even seen that black and white. Where'd that chicken come from? <laughs> yes. <You know? laughs> Every stray cat in the neighborhood shows up at your doorstep wanting some scratch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But oh my gosh. So, with your pigs, how'd you get along in this cold snap at Not For Nothing Homestead? We d- we did pretty good. Uh, now, it was a night of, supposed to be a night of three, turned into a night of four, four nights in a row, 
where we were below freezing. Um, it was supposed to be the first night was supposed to be the coldest and it yeah. got down to like, um, it got down to about 32, uh, 31, 32. Uh, the second night, however, the first night, the, the saving grace for a lot of the gardens and things, cause we both have gardens as well. Oh yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. The gardens and things, um, was that there was a wind blowing. So the frost didn't have time to settle on anything. Um, including the animals noses or feet or anything exactly. like that. And, you know, I noticed that the bowls, uh, night one, uh, when I went to go see like the, the chickens water, the bowl yeah. was fine. And it was, that was supposed to be the coldest night. And so I was like, oh, wow. Okay. So, you know, the next two nights, which again, turned into three, uh, the next two nights are going to be a breeze, you know, compared to what I've felt tonight. Still, it's a sleepless night. I mean, I was out there the first night at midnight, making sure that things were, the water was still flowing well for everybody. I mean, I was down there with a flashlight and I walked in and all the chickens are on the, I have like two different roosts. They're all yeah. looking at me like, what are you doing in here? What are you <laughs> doing here, mama? It's a little late for you, isn't it, lady? You're <laughs> usually in bed. And I was like, I want to make sure you're all okay. And I had put down extra, extra straw. Um, I mean, I went and got two extra bales. And I wasn't the only one at the feed store that was doing that. So, Oh, yeah. I um, mean, that's the feed store becomes very busy when it yes. is cold weather time. Yeah. When, when you know it's coming. Uh, yeah. You see a mad rush. It's like everybody that's going to you know, uh, Lowe's to exchange a propane tank or Walmart or something oh, yeah. like that. The feed store hay line and straw line becomes uh, one of the big lines to, to wait like, on stuff. It's like for uh, <laughs> when cold weather comes in, for those who don't have a homestead, it's like the toilet paper and the bread line <laughs> at the grocery store. Like Why there's nothing it? left. Okay, so you got to riddle me this, okay? Why is it that when there is a... I used to work at a grocery store. So why is it when there is a snowstorm coming, people wipe out the potatoes and the milk and the bread? What are you making with know. those three things? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> I, I, I'm the same way. I mean, they, it would make more sense. Okay, the milk I can follow. Yeah, um, I, I guess. I guess. <laughs> it, it would make more sense if they got flour. Yes. You, know, uh, you can make I'm your own stuck. bread. Yeah, I can stop. I'm going to be stuck at home. So let me get flour and yeast. And, hey, this is cool. Uh, it's like there's snow and yeah. ice. I can't go anywhere. Let's have yeah. a bread making party. You know? Yes. That's exactly. what we do. Yeah, it's like exactly. Treacherous weather. We go out. We take care of our our livestock. There's nothing more we can do there. We mm -hmm. come inside, and Dale puts on a chef hat, and <laughs> we start experimenting and cooking. I mean, yeah. What other there way to go. keep warm other than fire up the stove and let's make something? You oh know? my gosh! And the oven to boot. Yes, there's nothing better yeah. on a cold morning than to smell either a fresh cooked pancake or a fresh cooked biscuit oh yeah oh, biscuits yeah. gravy one of those. sausage yes. oh yeah yep reminds but, me of when i grew up in virginia yep grandma used to make it every morning but anyways we're we're like having a squirrel moment here again uh, okay. which we do quite often <laughs> so but you know that 32 degrees you never had a cease of your waterer with the pigs, right? Nope. Like they could still drink. Yes. They were still drinking. Um, the next morning I got up and everybody was still slurping and they were, <laughs> they had burrowed down in the hay so far that when I went down there, Daisy is notorious for doing that. She will burrow down and she'll 
hear me coming. Uh, and pigs must have excellent hearing. They got but excellent yelp. hearing. Yep. <laughs> excellent she, smeller, of she, course. She hears me coming and she pops and runs. And I'm like, oh, yeah. whoa, what's coming out at me there? <laughs> She's funny, but they were so happy to see me and they were so happy to see the sunshine. I oh, mean, yeah. the sun, they, they get the east sun first thing in the morning. Um, and you should have seen them out there basking in the sun, laying in the straw. It was so cute. So um, I put, I, I had some, um, not good hay left over. I mean, it uh -huh. was a couple year old grass hay. Yeah. Um, and so I put it out for mine. Uh, -huh. uh of course they ate half of it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you said, wait, you're supposed to cover up with that. <laughs> I don't know, you know, for people that think that pigs don't eat grass and hay. Yeah. You're kidding yourself because they yes. love it. Yeah. <laughs> I threw it in there and my seven domestic terrorists were like, thanks, dad. This yeah. Is a great <laughs> snack. And I mean, they were all just going to town, you know. Oh, my but gosh. That's so what funny. Was, so I made sure I put enough in there that they could have bedding and yes. kind of the same way I stuck my head in except for I did it you know um I stuck my head in there at like five o'clock when we got up you know yeah. around I just walked out check on check on things and it was the same way of course I'm using a flashlight just like you were <laughs> and I look in and I just see all these little noses That's and all of a sudden it was like Wait, dad's here. And we uh, yeah. had not set up our water tank yet. So we were watering in bowls, you know, like okay. pans. And yes. they thought I was not coming to water. Not stainless steel. Not nope, stainless rubber. steel. Yes, rubber, rubber pans. <laughs> so they thought I was coming to water them, which I did. Yes. But they all jumped up and they all run to the water bowls and they're like, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> you know, so I watered everybody. So we didn't have too much of a problem. I know for us here at the nine, when it gets down to 32, yes, that's freezing. But when it comes to most of our livestock watering um, apparatuses, like your barrel, mm -hmm. I'm not too worried at 32. Yeah. But what will freeze will be so oh, small sorry. and light that it will be um small enough that they can normally break that crust or they could yes you know and they can still get water it'll just be a skim on the top it would take mm -hmm. several days at 32 to yeah. get us to the point that it will freeze hard enough that they can't do anything yeah yeah exactly 32 at day and night like lisa just yes said. Um, okay. Okay. Can yeah, straight across the board, no ups and downs, like jumping up to fifty. Yeah. yeah. So okay. like fifty during the day, you got to remember, it takes that water several hours to get down to thirty-two. Yeah. You know when you're talking about that much volume. Now. Yes. Um, I just set up our big uh, IBC tote waterer, and nice. Uh, <laughs> kind of the same way we're dealing with 150 plus gallon of water mm. um now the biggest problem i have with freezing um at the very first when it gets to implement weather of course is that pig nipple yeah stainless steel nipple sticking out there exposed to the air you know and i asked that's where i asked dale when uh we installed the when joey installed the one uh, that we got, I asked Dale the other day, cause we, well, we have one of those cause Dale had suggested it. Sorry, I'm not phrasing this right right now. No, you are. And, and I asked Dale, I was like, okay, so is there, are, are one of the pigs going to end up like, you know, the little kid on a Christmas story where they get stuck ah! in the, <laughs> the, the metal pole, if they go and it's already frozen and he's, what did you say, Dale? No. 
that's not going to happen. <laughs> you're not going to have to go out there and grab a hold of Daisy's ears and pull her off like Dumb and Dumber. Because you know it's going to be her. Oh, yeah. Just, she gets. Isn't it, oh, isn't it funny it. how we have that? We all have <laughs> that, that one. That one. That is just like cannot keep out of trouble like, i know she and we have her. one that we were filling our our pans up before we went switch to the you know the full water tank yeah we were filling those pans up with a sprayer nozzle on a hose yeah and we have this one that decided <laughs> oh water comes from that spigot that's in their hand and would sit <laughs> there on its hind legs and try to bite the nozzle. <laughs> and of course the nozzle's up here and your yeah. hand's here. So where do you think that they would nip at? Your hand your first. Hand. Yes. Yes. Oh my and gosh. That's the first couple fun. times that a the first couple times that a sub 50 pound pig does that, you're gonna go, Oh, <laughs> that was cute. Yes. But but now make that pig a 90 to a hundred pounder. And they do that, and you're like, uh, that really hurt, dude. Yeah, I don't that's, be doing that no more. <laughs> it's not funny anymore. Not Mommy funny. doesn't think it's cute. <laughs> no. So they they now have graduated from the barn out to the lots, you know. And oh really? You've moved them oh, out, yeah. huh? That same yeah. that same um that same pig that she's ornery, you yes. know. She's the one that goes to every fence, and she's the one that has her head stuck through the fence. Oh. She's the one that climbed up on the fence. She's the one that's, oh, my buddy's laying over there, minding its own business asleep, and walks across the pen <laughs> just to root him in the side and wake yes. him up. <laughs> wow. You know, that's the one that's going to get her butt kicked at recess a lot. Okay? I'm going to name her Lucy. She's Lucy. <laughs> From the Lucy. Charlie Brown. Yes. <laughs> She's the one that pulls the football out from all the rest of them, you know. Stuff yes, like that. that's it, you little troublemaker, you. <laughs> exactly. I don't think I don't think Daisy intentionally does all these things. Um, but yeah, poor girl, she has been the one that trouble has landed on her head so she's not intentionally going after anybody now link on the other hand yes he will go over and uh poke the bear which would be yep. wilbur he's yeah and uh let me tell you something he's regretted that decision a couple of times i can hear him <laughs> out there but daisy just seems to fall <laughs> into trouble I, I she she never again she never does it intentionally it's not anything that she's trying to do but the poor thing it just always seems to be her but yeah and it it always seems to be there's always that one yeah you know for us there's always yeah. that one that's uh, that is so funny so they can't get through you've graduated them from the smaller fencing and inside the barn to now they're in the pig pen yep, so they're actually they're, out in the pig they can't get their head through there. Okay, that's good. No, they could get their little nose. Yeah. But they're, when it gets to their ears, it's too, yeah, that's too small for them, which is perfect yeah. with me. If they can trim the outside of the fence, I'm good with it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yes. I just don't want you going through the fence and in and yes. up in the road or at the neighbor's house. So, yes, or getting stuck. In the fence. Which happens. Which happens. And uh, I don't know. We may save that for the next podcast. And I think what, so. what happens and uh, what I had to do and then who I called. <laughs> <laughs> I know you what all know who I called. <laughs> That's no secret. <laughs> I don't know who you called. <laughs> I called Nana. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I called Dale. <laughs> I called Dale. But, um, so we, we had four nights of it. How many nights we, did you have? We had, uh, three nights that were pretty cold. Three. Yeah. Four, four days. Total. Was, so was your first one the worst? No, the second one was the worst. 
see those stinking weathermen. They lie every time. They yeah. lie like peep rugs. <laughs> I can tell you this though, man. It put it 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 kind of makes you move with urgency around your homestead. Mm-hmm. It sure it does. It kind of reminds you that um, and of course, you know, uh everything else starts playing into factor. So like chickens, you know, we a lot of people worry about their chicken waterers. We Mm -hmm. We're kind of the same way. We use automatic waterers for the ones that are in the coop. And yeah. uh, once it gets, so again, 32 degrees with a 40 to 50 degree in the, at the hottest part in the day, we don't get too nervous about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, continual 17 at night and never get over 32 in the day. We start dumping automatic waterers and we go to rubber pans yeah and water in the morning and water at night yeah thankfully a chicken doesn't require a lot of water yeah not not uh, in the winter time in the summertime not in the winter time summertime i agree everything requires a lot of water in the summer i had a lot of pans to, i had those reserve trays that you grow um that you put under your trays where you start new starts and then yep. you have like a solid one tray with holes and one tray is solid. I had those yep. and I was filling in them up during the day so they could go in there and stand. And oh, yeah. yours would actually stand in the water. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah I, That's I they just them... they wanted. I had like two and three of them set up and you could just see the relief in their face and. Of course, now that's gone because they don't need that now. They would be frozen, a frozen block. So yeah, that exactly. would be good. <laughs> yeah. So, so we were going to talk about expenses also, right? Oh, um, yes. So what yeah. was the hay price and straw price for you? So hay is $10 a bale, a square bale. <whistles> yeah. And that's pretty much countrywide because that's not too far off from where it is here is it if you buy it at like a feed supply store or something like that yeah if you can find a farmer to buy directly from um you may be able to get a dollar or two you know off. less yeah um but for the most part that's pretty close to what i'm hearing also what yeah. about straw now, straw, I was not, I, I'll be honest with you, I was not paying attention when I bought it because I bought it with three other bags of feed. So, you know, and I had to have it. So I was just like, here's my card. And they're like, do you need, need a receipt? And I'm like, nah, save the paper. <laughs> so the straw, I'm not sure of, but hopefully um, I will, I will know for next time. So they I can get, give you a better you know, idea of what that is. I I seen straw at six ninety nine a bale, really at our local um, store, and actually to me I I kind of thought and that's that may a be on the bale? cheap side. That was for a square bale. Yeah, that is on the cheap side. I thought that was probably on the cheap side. Yeah. Um, now, of course, we are in the heart of wheat country. Here. Yeah. So, so that might be there. there's lots of wheat straw available. Um, mm -hmm. Those that bale it, you know, they're becoming fewer and fewer that will do small square bales. But yeah, uh, it is so beneficial for your livestock, yes. especially bedding rice. Um, yes. And, and from everything that I've read, um, for the most part, the straw holds up better than the hay does. So that is why I bought uh, straw for the chickens. And I'm going to tell you, it is going a lot further than the hay yeah. did. Uh, smell will be less. The oh, yeah. Oh, breakdown pfft. of it. Yes. <laughs> you know, smell is your moisture much content. Better. The moisture content, of course, in the hay is more than what it is in the straw. Mm -hmm. You've got more surface area in that straw. Yeah. Um, now, a lot of people fall into the myth of, well, you know, they don't have straw, so I'm going to use wood shavings for mm -hmm. 
cold weather bedding. Yeah. And I do not, I, I don't want anybody to think that I'm trying to say that shavings don't make good bedding. We use shavings in our, in our chicken coops extensively. Yeah. Um, it makes great bedding for absorption of, of stuff. It smells better. Yeah. yeah. Um, of, by stuff, I think everyone knows what I mean. Things yeah. that are <laughs> processed food and yes. water. And yes. <laughs> but now, now you're you're talking about thinly shaving. Or are you talking about the thicker we, we shaving? We use large flake. So the big okay. big flakes. Um, okay. Now we have in the past got a bag of the really fine like curly q shaving yes yes and we'll use that nest box yeah okay hens just seem to like it in nest boxes yes um but the big large flake is what we're after it does yeah. a good job now yeah. and the pigs are for the larger livestock same way it works really good for absorption to keep that moisture away to maybe mm. help keep that, you know, keep it sanitary. Yeah. But heat wise, you're not really helping him. No. I mean, it would one take a, on it, it and <laughs> they're smushed it. Yeah. It would take an extremely large amount for, say, said piggies, like we've been mm -hmm. talking about. Yes. To dig in enough and give themselves enough cover. Mm -hmm. To keep themselves warm, where that yeah. straw is such a better alternative. Yeah, they've done. I, I just can't say enough about the straw. And I'll tell you, I gave, uh, put some down there where the pigs are too. And it is really uh, standing up to them as well. I mean, they're big, so they're not little ones like yours, but still, I mean, I've still, by this time, if it was hay, it would have been matted down almost into the clay soil, rocky soil that we have. And yep. I, it's still got a good bit of fluff to it. I can and still actually, see lazy you know, nestling down in there. So I know it's got some fluff to it still. And let's be honest, what you're doing by putting that hay and that straw down in your um, sacrifice pen, let's call it, yeah. where you have your pigs, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, because you sacrificed that piece of ground out of your homestead mm -hmm. that you just said is high in clay, high in rocks. So mm -hmm. let's take those pigs. Let's take that hay and straw. Let's continuously keep putting it in the pen with them. What are the, what are we building? We're building a composting on a large scale, right? Yes. So, so instead of what people think that it's going to do to the ground by putting those pigs there, we're going to tear that ground down. Instead, we're mm -hmm. going to start building organic material up on that ground yes. and actually turns into building better ground there. Yes. Um, and uh, you got a surprise last year, didn't you? After your pigs had been moved out of one pen for quite some time, you and Nana went out there. You want to tell everybody what you guys saw? So <laughs> we you uh, said, I'll be dang. Guess what's growing out of the middle of the pig pen? <laughs> Go ahead. So we uh, we had a pen that was pretty much rock. I mean, that's all it is. It's rock. It's very little soil. Um, that's kind of why we made the pen right there. You yeah, know, it's that's just, what it's good for. That's what it's good for. So we put, we used it. Uh, that's like the pen that they start off in um, when we very first got pigs. To make them yeah. understand, uh, these are fences. You don't get out of those. Uh, yes. <laughs> Mr. Dale brings you feed, and this and is your water, you know. Mm -hmm. And we leave them there for a few weeks, and then they get moved to another place. And mm -hmm. then, like, the last month or so that they're here before they go to freezer camp. Yeah. That's where they hang out. Well, yeah. last year in that month or so of course that was right there around this time of the year 
Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, first of November. Yes, it was. So it was. <laughs> what do we have a whole lot of? Like everyone has one on their front porch, right? Jack o' lanterns mm -hmm. and pumpkins. They use them to decorate and everything. Gun. Yes. This, this. So I um I let it be known on my social media that we would our piggies would love to uh take care of your jack o' lanterns for you. And oh. your pumpkins. I never because thought about that. I should have done that. <laughs> pumpkins are natural dewormers. Mm -hmm. They have good feed value, relative feed value. Yes. Yeah. So we just start throwing said pumpkins in pens with pigs. And the oh. pigs get zoomies and no. they love them. <laughs> they're like, they're like, dad brought us a cupcake. Yay! Yes, and they're just exactly. like, and they, they, you know, you throw it hard enough that it breaks apart and they'll get a piece. And if there's more in there with them, they'll chase each other all over trying to get that piece. You oh, know, wow. it's, that's it's, funny. It's, if nothing else, the entertainment value of it, yes, said, yes. is like awesome. But yeah, so, so we did that. Of course, those that weren't jack o' lanterns were whole squash or pumpkins. And they yes. had what in them? Seeds. Well, guess Seeds. what happened about midsummer here? We go, <laughs> I go walking by that pen. I hadn't put anything in there yet. Yeah. And I went, that's a crazy looking little vine that's grew in yeah. there. That was not a pumpkin me. vine. That's so crazy. <laughs> and we got we got pumpkins. Did you? So, so the same pigs, now the new ones. When they got back in that pen, there was already self-made feed in there. Yeah. Now, the only problem was they were only like this big because of the um, frost got to them before they got yeah. a chance to mature. But, yeah. hey, I'm going to tell you, the domestic terrorists, they still <laughs> loved every bit of that. I bet they did. I bet they said, oh, my gosh, this is a welcome to your new pen. I love this. <laughs> we have we have room service. Look. Yeah, it's they were. They, the call every, is just been here. <laughs> every button weed, every blade of grass. Oh, uh, wow. Every, every bit of um, ragweed that was dried up in there. Every crunchy leaf. Like, you turn those little domestic terrorists in there. And they're like little Hoover vacuums. They're just like. Oh, they are. They oh, they're are. everywhere. And they will right. have that place tore down to nothing but dirt inside of a week. Exactly. Especially when you have seven of them. <laughs> well, yeah. And so that is, you're stumbling across a really good subject that I don't know if we have time to talk about today. But that's <laughs> if, that's if you're feeding, uh, if you're feeding them on pasture. Uh, mm -hmm. how do I know when to move them to the next pasture? Oh, yes. Okay. Well, I guess but. we'll have to cover that maybe on the next one. Yep. And we'll also, we'll also say what else happened. The, cause the first night was not the worst night for either one of us. And, um, the next night was really bad and we got down to like 26, I mean, and Ooh. you think, you know, 32, 33, uh, 26 is not that bad. When you're talking about water and you're talking about animals and warmth and all of that, it, it, yeah, that. You start getting worried. That little bit of a degree shift because you're now below freezing for at least um, six hours throughout the night, you know, starting in the early morning hours. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit, um, you worry, you wor you're a parent of a toddler or two. You're supposed you worry. to be worried. I mean, yeah. we are stewards. God has given us these creatures for us to take care of. Yes. And as a, as a stutter, whether we are a homesteader or an urban stutter or a suburban yeah. stutter, Yes. It, it is our piece of this world that we are to take care of. And yeah. um, we are the caretaker of those animals. Now, mm -hmm. you know, people want to get lost in the weeds about, oh, is it right that we 
turn those into food or not. It doesn't, I don't care what side of the fence you're on. Um, we are to be good caretakers and, and animal stewards, um, yes. no matter what side of that fence you're on. And right. us making sure that they're warm, they're fed, and they got water Yeah, is like the bare minimum. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah. Entertainment. Yeah. We'll talk about entertainment too. <laughs> those things that <laughs> Del says, Hey, go build this. They'll love it. <laughs> and he's right. He's right. So anyway, so I guess we'll close this one for now. Um, yep. And then uh, we'll see you guys back on next week's podcast uh, where we'll cover what are we covering? When to move them to the next pasture. We'll cover when to move them. We'll get more in depth into that expense side, especially when it comes to feed. And, and yes. And um, also let you know what happened the other three night, two nights. Of the, the other two nights. We'll start off with that. Yes. We'll start off with that. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Dale. This has been fun. Again, it is. Yes. So what was it that you said last time when we ended? I can't remember what you said. It was a I really remember. it was a really great way to end the show and I was like, wow, that needs to be, you know how you have your farm on, keep strong, God loves you and so do we. Um uh, I think it was go go forward and grow go grow your homestead. I think that's what you said. Go grow your homestead. So Don't grow your homestead. Yeah. Yeah. That's yep. how we'll end it. How's that sound? That <laughs> okay, sounds everybody. Great. Go grow your and remember, homestead. And <laughs> remember, remember, this is being this is being not only broadcast on the current channel that you are listening to or watching. Yes. It's also on the other one. So if you're on nine acres, yes. you can go check out not for nothing and vice versa. Yes. If you're on not for nothing homestead. Come on Go over and visit us at nine, nine acres. acres. Oh, yes, absolutely. You're going to gain a lot of knowledge. You really you are. You need, to, you need to go see the Dale man for sure. <laughs> no, you need to go see Ginger. Yeah, well, I, I I have my moments, but they're not as many as yours. So, but <laughs> equally, mainly, we equally mainly have you things can to see offer. how to dorky dance if you come to mind. Yeah. Oh, no. Everybody needs that skill, Dale. That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see you guys next week on our next podcast. So go ahead, Dale. Tell them. Go. So move forward and grow your homestead. Nice. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, yeah. What did I just do? Hold on. Okay, there we go. <laughs>